guys good day and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful style okay and um this is actually a pencil dress topping at the above knee okay don't make it to your knee points it has to actually stops at the above knee and over here this down part is a very full and beautiful um 360 degree peplum and it's also gathered a little at this back side here and in case you are wondering why it's, it's having this kind of volume or puffiness on that it's because you actually use a hard net hard tool net fabric underneath it or you can actually make a petticoat for it okay underneath it here to make it have this volume and come out well then another point of note here is this upper part of the sleeves is actually an off shoulder dress and this fluffy sleeves here is actually beautiful and i'm going to be showing you how to cut it out it's actually made starting with um 360 degree peplum as well however and over here i have um, a beautiful ankara fabric to make it it's actually four yards now i may not be able to achieve this full um peplum down here at this lower part of the dress because of my limited material you actually need up to about five six yards to make it come out as beautiful as this depending on your size okay and of course for the fluffy up, uh, upper part of the sleeves there i have also my bridal and uh, doll face satin satin fabric actually is i recommend you use satin fabric for this upper part of um the dress all right so let's go ahead the first thing we'll be making now is the um major bodies our dress okay then before the fluffy nature and then the fluffy sleeves and then the down part of the dress so guys um for the bodies of the dress i am not going to make any bustier dress i'm just going to be making a princess that straight um, dress from the shoulder line to the above the knee line now above the knee is not stopping at the knee line knee cap exactly for those of you who are just familiar with the word above the knee actually the above the knee point is actually like four to five inches away from the knee cap before you get to your knee cap you remove um, four or five inches for your above the knee this is because if you are making this type of dress you make it exactly to stop at your knee cap you will not be able to move very well okay so over here i'm going to mark out my shoulder line this is my shoulder line, my bust line, under bust, hip line, and of course this is the above the knee line. And I'm drafting directly on my fabric, not using a pattern. Now I'm going to be showing you how to make a princess that straight um, gown. Okay, supposing you want to make a longer gown, you can just increase the length to wherever a long pencil gown. You can increase the length to wherever you want it to be, whether mini, midi, or normal. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you how to make a full shoulder. Um, princess that straight blouse and um, dress without the bustier and i'm also going to show you the main one that we have, we'll be using for this style of today which is also off shoulder so for the full shoulder first and foremost we mark out our shoulder length and from here is, um, for me it's actually seven inches which is also called across back the shoulder span and from there i will mark out my armhole please use your french comb for this if you have any then the next thing i'll do is that from my bust line down to the above the knee line or your full length line in case you're making a longer dress i'm going to be marking out my bust span okay which is actually mine is four inches eight divided by two four inches because i'm cutting down on the fold so i'll be marking four inches all the way from the bust line down to my full length and in this case here it's actually my above the knee line and I'll connect all my markings please you may want to use a ruler for that for those of you who don't know how to effectively curve a princess that what you do is that whatever is your bust pan here which is for you come to this full shoulder line at the armhole side here and also mark out that four inches from the full shoulder down along the armhole line you mark out four inches and then try to draw a curve okay to so meet back to this your dart line and there you have your um, full um, princess that line here so you may want to go ahead and cut it out straight like this and one thing to notice that whenever you are having your princess that you have to do an, a little extension here by maybe one inch or thereabouts to cover back to your armhole this is because usually there's always a shortage at the full length line or this other side the armhole side when you are joining your princess that depending on where you start from okay so you may also want to cut it out like this after doing your shaping or you may want to contour 
your dart okay let me show you how to do that quickly now for the front part of our dart here okay for the front part of our dart now actually we'll be using our waistline here i forgot to add it initially okay so now i will take my waistline as the middle part of my dart okay so at the waistline here on both sides i'm going to be marking out half of an inch on both sides here half of an inch away from the dart okay after doing that i will come over from the bust line and from the bust line to the waist is actually six inches so from the waist down also i'm going to be marking six inches since i'm using the waistline as the midpoint okay so the distance from your bust to your waist should also be the distance from your waist to the down part where you will be able to shape your dart so that means your dart will be all together 12 inches long for me yours may be different depending on the distance from your bust line to your waistline okay so from here now i'm going to be covering it out like we would our bust here okay we are making a bust here but not exactly like that i'm going to be covering it out to meet back so this 12 inches line the same thing goes for the opposite direction i'm sure most of you are already we are familiar with um the the um half cut where we have to attach our pet plug okay we are not familiar with most of you may not be familiar with this straight method so imagine if we were to I'll be adding our pet plug this is what we'll do right stopping at the waistline here so the opposite thing is what you'll be doing for this down part stop it's not really ideal to make it all the way down to your hip because it will not balance well with this half cut that we are using our waist okay for the half width and width of the length of the dart the next thing we want to do now is you may also want to contour this arm hole here this other side of the places that with half of an inch okay or even up to one inch to curve it remember we are not going to be using any bust here so you may want to curve it to meet back with this princess back line instead of using it exactly the same but however like i said before you can do your bodies without this contouring of that and it will still come out well if you are doing your bodies without this contouring of the dart all you need to do is your, if your waist round waist you take your actual round waist from this middle point let me say your round waist divided by four is eight inches you will just come and take eight inches you may want to add extra one inch because you are going to be joining the princess dart or you may want to go ahead and add the total allowance after your eight inches maybe here uh, eight inches if you intend to add one inch for your seam allowance you can make it two because of the dart okay but if you are doing this contouring and then you do your shaping the same thing goes for the remaining parts your balls your other balls your waist and your hip and down but if you are doing this contouring it's going to be a different method because you you can see here there's a wide gap and on your dart here so it's going to be different let's do that quickly now this dart on our bust line here is exactly the same so there is no need of us taking any precaution there we are going directly to our round bust around bust here is eight and a half plus let me add one inch extra because of um, the princess that joined it. that will give me nine and a half all right so i'll be marking nine and a half here now on my other bust line also the dart contouring of the dart is not affecting it it's still on the same line and my other bust measurement is seven and a half i'll add one inch only that will give me eight and a half and i'm going to be marking it here now getting to the waistline there is a big difference here because of the contouring of the dart so what am i going to do now my round waist is seven inches i'm going to be dividing that seven inches accordingly now for this middle part here how many do i have from this dart to this middle front here i have three and a half okay now so seven minus three and a half will still give me three and a half okay so i'll be coming over to this line now to mark out the remaining three and a half if i were to take out seven exactly you or add my one inch you can see where to stop seven my, my round waist is seven plus one for the dart you will see where it see where it stops here eight inches and it would have been giving me a smooth and beautiful shape here okay but because of this contouring of that you have to extend it okay you have to consider it so that's why my shape is now coming this way on the waistline by the time i finish joining this dart i will have a perfect shape it will come back okay now i go back to the hip the round hip for me for this client is nine inches and there's no dart whatsoever here so i'll be taking 10 inches because of the um princess dart here 10 inches and of course depending on how tight you want it to be at the above the knee point here whatsoever you have at your hip level round hip you minus one or two inches 
the more inches you minus from it, the more tighter it will be at your knee curve level. So if you know that it's not be convenient for you, one inch is enough, and I'll be working with one inch. So on my round hip here, I have 10 inches. That means on my above the knee line here, I'll be making it nine inch to give it that beautiful shape. And then you want to use your hip curve for this place. But if you know you can work with your free hand like me, you can go ahead and do so. All right, so this will become my shape. I'm going to go ahead and add my allowance. Okay, I'm adding just two inches allowance for this. Okay, my clients always like enough allowance in their dress. Also saves you the trouble in case there is any shortages or mistakes so this is my same allowance now that i've added to it so the next thing now is this is for full shoulder if you are making a full shoulder neck you just come here and then i usually mark out three inches on my shoulder and then whatever shape of neck you want to give to it you mark out your neck depth maybe five inches maybe if it's a round neck it will go like this this way and then you cut out your border lines that will give you your full shoulder places that straight um dress okay but now we are making an off the shoulder how deep do you want to off the shoulder neck to be um i'm going to be using six inches for the depth you can make yours if you want it to come down very well you can make it up to eight inches mind you this is your bust line so the, you, you also be checking how the diff distance between your bust and your neckline so that your breast will not be too exposed however if you look at this style very carefully this fluffy um sleeve there is coming up is coming above the actual neckline so you can go ahead and make it low then the fluffy sleeves will cover up okay for it to go up at the end of the day all right so for me six inches is enough now this six inches here i've marked it in the middle front of my neckline here now from this princess that side here i'm going to be curving it in just like this to give me my round of the shoulder neckline and then i'll go ahead and cut out on the border lines remember if it is a full shoulder you don't need to draw this line all you need to do is to cut out here now but since it's an all shoulder i will be leading this part i will be leading from here downwards so i'll go ahead and cut out so guys i'm done cutting it out on my border lines as you can see the entire this entire part is going out okay and uh, remember this little part here that I controlled out of my dad is also going out. And of course this middle part also is going out. So this will make my front uh, part of my bodice. I uh, will go ahead and do the same thing for my back piece. I may not put this contouring at the back piece. And I also ensure that the back has uh, one inch at the middle front side here for the zipper allowance. That will just be the difference between the front and the back. I'll go ahead and cut it out and then show you that. So guys, this is the back piece. As you can see, I made that very straight, like I was trying to explain earlier in the other parts for the front piece. You can also make the front piece straight like this, or you may also want to just contour it. But this uh, time around, if you are contouring the back piece, it's just a V shape. You don't need to curve out this bust area like I did with the front. Just a V shape to the waist and a V shape back downwards. Okay, that's how it's going to be. But I'm not going to be doing that here. I can work with it like that. And um, if I'm placing the front piece on it, as you can see, it's the same. All right. Okay. And you can see the difference in the contouring of the front from the back. All right. And um, the next thing I'll go to, um, I'll be doing now is to place these patterns, these fabrics now on my linings, cut it out, sew the entire bodice before making the down part. And of course the puffy and the ruffles of, of on the neckline the sleeves okay and um, for me if I'm making that kind of a neckline especially now that it's off the shoulder I'm going to be attaching a small sleeve band to it before making it if you want to go ahead and make it directly without making a small sleeve to it it will be very difficult for you so so to ease the stress and the process you just have to make a small sleeve maybe like um, three inches wide or two inches even wide so that you have something to work with that will help you all right, so we'll go ahead now, sew the entire bodies, and then I'll show you the next step. So guys, I'm done. I can see here that I fixed a small straight sleeves of the shoulder sleeves, and of course I've done the back, uh, down part of my dress as well. Turning it to the back, you can see here that I made a little gathers at the middle back line here, at this down part to give it that effect. I have not yet added anything underneath. I need to add my hard net and lining to give it that full um, figure that it has. 
and I'm using 180 degree peplum that is half a circle peplum here you can use a um, full circle peplum if you do and over here I fixed my zipper halfway like um, five inches away from my or six inches rather away from my original neckline this is because the other puffy sleeves is going to be coming in and then my zip will be going on top of it so I want to give that space so now that I've finished making my dress this way to this stage and it is fitted well fitted to my clients um, body I'm going to go ahead and then measure around this neckline from one zip end here to the other zipper end it should be around 40 inches or thereabout for an average lady okay it's usually around 40 inches okay here I'm having 43 inches because it's really off the shoulder okay it's really off the shoulder so I'm having 43 inches here so now I'll be using that 43 inches as my second press okay to cut out my three so i'll be using that for the three inches as my second friends to cut out the upper part of the sleeves okay now that upper part of the sleeves is being made first by you cutting out your full circle that's your three that is your 360 degree peplum you need to cut it out so in case you don't know how to fold your 360 degree peplum um you have to know how to do that okay now before we go ahead let's calculate now we said our circumference of the round neck is 43 inches if you divide that by the constant 6.28 that will give us 6.84 we can actually approximate that to actually 7 inches so now 7 inches how what should be the length of our peplum um, if you want the peplum to have the, the sleeves rather that puffy sleeves to be more um, fuller you can make it up to like 10 15 inches okay but if you want a smaller puffiness at the sleeves you can take maybe five or there about i think i'll be going with 10 10 will be enough for me so 7 plus 10 that will give me 17 all right so i'm going to be making my fold now for my 360 degree peplum okay this is 17 okay so the first arc and the length of my peplum everything I need to make my 360 degree flare is 17 inches so after folding it into two like this to give me 17 inches I'm still going to fold it again into four and this part also should give me 17 inches as well so it's going to be giving me 17 by 17 if it doesn't give me that I'm going to adjust it until it gives me that so here I'm having 17 and also here I'm having 17 so I'm making a square now 17 by 17 make sure that everything underneath is very okay so like I said before the arc my first arc here is going to be 6.8 which I have approximated to 7 inches so I'm going to be turning here at this part where the this edge is closed and this other edge is closed don't use the open edges from this middle point here okay seven all the way till I get to the other end and here I go this is seven inches round okay I want to ensure that I'm having seven inches very well okay and I said the length of my hair from here should be 10 okay so I'm going to be like 17 here okay from the beginning here I'm going to be taking 17 also all the way around so I've gotten 17 here then I'm going to be cutting this out cut it out here and then here as well to give me my circle but before I do that I want to ensure that this is going to give me the round circumference of my shoulder which I just measured which was 43 inches now this is folded into 4 and over here I'm having um, on this curve I'm having 11 okay so 11 times 4 will be giving me 44 and meanwhile I have 43 is a good thing so I'm good to go I'll go ahead now and cut it out so this is my peplum now that I've cut out my 360 degree peplum okay so before I open it completely I'm going to do something okay as you can see now that it's on the fold all right so I'm going to be giving a mark I usually call it nudging at the these four edges okay in geography we'll call it the four cardinal points your north south east and west okay all right so by the time i open this you can see the four sides of my peplum have been nudged 
the north, south, east, and west, okay? But because it is having a zipper at the back, so I'm going to be opening one edge of it like this. I'm going to be opening it this way, okay? So now, how do you achieve that style? Now, this is so that style. You have to very. Pardon me, I also forgot to nudge the down part, okay? Just as you are nudging the upper part, okay? You also nudge the down part as well. You give a mark in there to know the down part as well. So, these are the down parts. I'm also going to be nudging them, okay? So, you nudge them as well. And remember, this other side is already open, so there will be no need nudging the open side. So, I have nudged it, and I'll open it. All right, now, so this is the middle part, okay? So I'm starting, let me turn it so that you see very well, okay? So this is the middle part, and this is the middle down part. So I'm starting with the middle part first. So here now, I'm going to be folding it. Now, this is the bad face of the material, and this is the good face, okay, facing down. So the good face, now bad face is going to be the bad face. As you can see, I used 10 inches, so you can see when I folded it into two, see how smaller it is now. So that is why I said if you want a smaller sleeve, you use like 5 to 7, 10 inches. But if you want a, a very full and bigger puffy sleeves, you use 10 inches above. You can even make it up to 20, depending on how dramatic and big you want it to be. So I'll pin the down part cardinal points together. Okay, so this other side as well. Okay, we'll be meeting this side too. Okay. I'm pinning it there together. Okay, and these edges... Okay, we'll meet this edge as well. I'll pin it together. Alright, so I'm done with this part. I'll come over here too. You have to nudge the upper and the lower part of your cardinal points when it's on the fold, when you fold it into four. That's the way you can achieve this. And also this edge here, I'm going to be pinning it together. Okay. All right. So you can see that I have excesses here in between each of the cardinal points. Now, what I'm going to be doing with these excesses is that I'm going to be doing my gather. Okay. From this one pin to the next pin, I stop. I do my gather from this pin again to the next pin, all the way here. This other edge, not the middle part. This edge that is on the excess. That's why I'm going to be doing my gather. So you may want to start from the other end, but I, I prefer if you do it individually. Do not do one straight gather from the beginning down to this other edge, no. Okay? This is what I'll be doing now. Just watch me. From this pin here, I'll start making my gather using a running stitch. I'm using my needle and thread. Okay? I'll make a gather till I reach this edge. And you are not to make your gather together with this other lower part that you pinned. The, pier, the lower part is only for the cardinal points. You only make your gather for this other downward part of your flare, okay? If you make it together, then you are making a very big mistake because as you can see, they are not equal. Here is shorter, here is wider. So we are making a gather for this wider part, which is the lower part, so that it can be equal with this side that will stitch together. So you, I'm um, continuing to make my um, running stitch to form my gather all the way till I get to the end. There. Okay, so I'm almost at the first part here of my gather, which is reaching the edge. Now remember, I'm leaving like one inch here because this other part it will be going in for the zipper part, and it doesn't really need my gather. So by the time I drag my pin out this way, you can now see. So I'm going to be stretching it, okay, so that it will now be equal with this lower part here, okay. You can actually use your um, 720 degree peplum to try it out. I haven't tried it with um, 720 degree peplum yet, but I would love to see it if you can try it out with this. I normally do mine with just um, 360 degree peplum. So I'll be cutting my thread, the excess now, and then I'll be tying this other edge. Okay? I have to tie it in such a way that it will be equal. It is not advisable to start from one edge and make the running stitch on this other part straight. Um, Wait, no, it's not good. You can also use your pleating method if you don't want to do your gather. But I think it comes out better using your gather. How do you make your pleating method? Like this one now. I'll start pleating here. 
maybe I'm using my machine or my pins, I start pleating. Okay, you start pleating this way on it until it becomes equal. You can see how it will be going with your pleats and compare it with your dada. It's still the same thing, it's still fine. Okay, you can make your pleats this way, sew it until you reach this other edge. But I prefer using my gather. So now that I've made the first gather for this other cardinal point, which is at the edge. I'm moving over to the next cardinal point. I'll do the same thing until I'm done with the, all the cardinal points. So guys, I'm done with all the gathers for, uh, for all the cardinal points. So now what I'm going to do next is to make sure that I evenly distribute the gathers. Okay, and you, all, you have to make sure that it aligns with the back, the length of the back, okay? So what I just did with the gather is to try to make that down part, which is wider, to be equal with this upper arc okay so you can see here it's well relaxed and if i turn it to the front also it's equal and well relaxed so what i'm going to do now is to go ahead and stitch them together while i evenly distribute the gathers okay i'll stitch the upper part and the lower part together the part i just made the gather on and the underneath ones together after doing that i'll bring back my dress where i'm attaching it to this is the reason why i had to bring the zip down okay halfway down all right so i'm going to start by doing this okay this part that has the gathers has to face down here can you see do not make the mistake of using this plain part this way mm -mm. as you can see it's very plain it won't bring out the style okay so what am i saying where you are placing it the gathered part should face the good face of the material starting from the zipper side here now i'm going to be giving depending on how high you want this to be so supposing this were to be one inch you can see from the uh, neckline here one inch down and exactly at the zipper line if i start from there let me use my pins okay if i should start from here now to start sewing Make sure that you pin it first to see the outcome with your pins before you start stitching to avoid them um, loosening your stitches. Okay, so I'm going to be giving one inch difference to sew round from the edge. I hope you get that. So by the time I pin it round by one inch from this edge now, by the time I'm opening it, okay, you can see. I'll try as much as possible to make it a little bit higher. You can see this way is higher, like three quarter of an inch higher than the neckline. That's why I had to give one inch difference, okay? As you can see now, after sewing it round, then I'll fold it upwards like this. So let me go ahead and spin this round and then sew it and show you the next step. So just go ahead and pin it like this, continue. I'm done fixing my flounce that i gathered to the bodies of my dress around the neckline as you can see i left one inch allowance from the neckline all the way to the back okay and i have a little bit of excess here which i'm going to be i'm going to cut out okay cutting out the excess now so how do i go about making this all right so the first step to do here, i'm going to be starting with the front middle front side okay so i'm going to be lifting it upwards this way while i open it into two like this i try and open it make it wide okay now this is a very small um, version of that if you want to achieve exactly as it is in the picture there you have to make your peplum remember when i was cutting mine i made mine 10 inches wide long rather so you have to make yours like 20 inches 25 inches the more longer peplum is the more fluffy and fuller it will be okay so i'm opening it and widening it up opening it up to cover this neckline initial neckline that i did okay something like this and then i'm going to be pinning it which of course later on i'll be stitching exactly where my pins are okay so you're going to go ahead and be doing it like this all the way around let me just make the front for you so you can see how it's going now this is just a smaller um, so it's 
can see you just go ahead doing it like that so you see that you actually needed your smaller um of the shoulder sleeve so that it will not be too difficult to achieve this type so you still need your of the shoulder sleeve a small banded of the shoulder sleeve so you continue this as you can see it's forming the puffy sleeves already so i'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way around and then i'll show you how to stitch it If I fix my zipper back, um, it will be better off. I can see. This is the back view. You are, you want to check for any more pinnings. If you want to pin more, so this is how the back will be. If you want it more puffy, you need to make your uh, fair plum to be up to 25 inches or more. And this is the front view. So what I'm going to be doing next is that each and every single place that I've pinned. I will be tacking it very neatly with a matching thread. I'm just going to do one or two and then show you. So I've threaded my needle with a matching thread. So I'll be starting from one end and then turn around to the other end, okay? Alright, so um, I'm just going to be picking it and at every point where my pin is, I'll start with the lower row before coming with the other, to the upper row. Okay, you want to ensure that your thread by all means is not showing it's not visible okay all right so there i'll just be tucking it closely to each other you also want to do it in such a way that when you look underneath of your cloth as well it's not too visible okay there's a way you can do it such that it will not be appearing on the lining part the better okay you may want to find somewhere under here i think i'll prepare that and then bring out your needle somewhere under here and tie okay before you move on to the next stage you tie it like this okay and then cut it out all right you can see it's covered before Coming over to the next point where you you attach your pin, and then repeating the process all over again from point to point. I'm just like trying to get away where my work here will be very neat. Just a little pinch, okay, so that it's not too visible underneath. You can see this one is not even visible at all, okay. So just a little pinch. Maybe twice will be enough. Okay. And then you pass it underneath. This time I pass stitch there twice. And then I'm going to be tying it there at this point. Again, then cutting out my thread and needle. Then move to the next point. Okay, just like this. I'll continue that way till I'm done with all the points and that is how you'll be able to then you when you're done you come back here and then sew back your zipper normally as it should all right and that will be all for the upper part of this dress now for the lower part okay like I said before I'm not making exactly that lower part I just make a normal half circle um, flare because I'm using a limited material okay and for the back as well i made sure that my peplum was a little bit excess where i did a little of pleating here you want to achieve that full nature of this dress according to how it is in the picture all you need to do is to add your net underneath you just make gathers of pleating of your hard net okay two net underneath and then add your lining also to make that dress come out the way it is and of course do the hemming for the full length side of your dress 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to my channel. Give us a thumbs up. And also, join us on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook at Bellwing Creations Academy. Alright, till I come away again next time. Bye.